This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, April the 12th, 2019. It's the birthday of Antonio de Sangallo the Younger, the Italian architect and designer of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. He was born 1484 in Florence, and he apprenticed with Donato Bermonte while he was working on the Papal Apostolic Palace in Rome and on St. Peter's. Antonio took over when Donato died, and he oversaw the project from 1520 to his own death in 1546. He also worked on the Pauline Chapel, the Sala Regia, the Scala Regia, the Palazzo Farnese, and on St. Patrick's Well in Orvieto. It's also the birthday in 1717 of Henry Clay. He was Virginia-born, but cut his teeth working as a lawyer in Lexington, Kentucky. He was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives for the Democratic Republican Party in 1810 and elected Speaker of the House the very next year. He left to fight the War of 1812 and returned afterwards to pick up his post as the Speaker of the House. He proposed an economic plan that he called the American System. It advocated for infrastructure spending, support for the National Bank, and for protective tariffs. He's perhaps best known as one of the fathers of the Missouri Compromise, which put off the war between the states for probably another 40 years or so. He ran for president in 1824, 1832, 1840, 1844, but sadly he never made it. In 1850, he again played mediator in another compromise meant to stave off civil war. He died just two years later, and he managed to prevent war, at least in his lifetime. Henry Clay was, without a doubt, one of the most important American politicians of his time, and if we're being honest, in our American history. In 1945 today, U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt died in office and Vice President Harry Truman was sworn in as the 33rd President of the United States of America. Truman has the unenviable reputation of being the only man to authorize the deployment of nuclear weapons as an act of war. His predecessor has the dubious reputation of being the only man elected to the presidency of the United States more than twice. He served from 1933 until 1945, 12 full years, and he was only months into his fourth term. Had Roosevelt died six months earlier, Henry A. Wallace, and not Harry S. Truman, would have been faced with concluding World War II. Despite his age and his physical limitations, Roosevelt argued that the U.S. was in the midst of a serious war, a war which had come to our shores at Pearl Harbor in December 1941. He said that the U.S. should be under stable leadership until the war was concluded, and the populace agreed. Still, in 1947, only two years after his death, the 22nd Amendment to the United States Constitution was passed by Congress, limiting the President of the United States to two terms in office. It was ratified finally in February of 1951. In 1961 today, Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to travel into outer space. The space race was, of course, a public and a symbolic part of the Cold War. It was a battle in the press for technological superiority. After the nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, everyone knew that all human life could be wiped out in minutes at the touch of a button. The space race gave the U.S. and the USSR a focus for new, advanced technologies which could, hint, hint, wink, wink, not be military in application, or so they say. The USSR would go on to best the U.S. at basically every milestone. Yuri Gagarin went up in Vostok 1 today and performed a manned orbital flight. He returned safely to Earth, and the cameras were there to make sure everyone knew that the Russians were the technology leaders of the world. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.